It was another spectacular year in Yellowstone. In this monthly update of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, we're going to cover our top five headlines for what happened in 2023. Are you ready? Number one, earthquakes, ground deformation, all amazingly average for the Yellowstone region. 2023, we saw about 1,600 earthquakes, about 80 in the month of December. This is on the low end of average for the region, where there's typically 1,500 to 2,500 earthquakes every year. We saw over 2,400 earthquakes in 2022 and over 2,700 in 2021. So we're down from those, but still in that average area. And about 50% of the earthquakes occurred in swarms. That's small clusters of earthquakes that occur in rapid succession. The two biggest swarms both occurred in March, one beneath the north part of Yellowstone Lake and the other over by West Yellowstone, Montana. And that belt of seismicity in the West Yellowstone area is the most common area for seismicity in the park. The largest earthquake of the year, a magnitude 3.7. In terms of ground deformation, the caldera continued to subside at about an inch or so per year. That really hasn't changed since 2015. We see little bump ups in the summertime. That's from all of the snow melt and rainwater as runoff that gets into the ground, causes the ground to sort of puff up like a sponge, and then it goes back to subsidence in the winter. So no real changes in ground deformation over the past several years. Number two, cool geyser activity. Steamboat Geyser, the tallest active geyser in the world, had eight eruptions in 2023. Now this is the lowest number of eruptions in a year since it became active again in 2018, but it's clearly not done yet. As of the end of December, there's a lot of minor activity going on, which points to the fact that there'll probably be another major eruption in early January. So hopefully Steamboat's not done putting on a show. Closer to Old Faithful, Giant Geyser erupted for the first time since 2019. That one also goes through phases like Steamboat, so maybe we'll see some more activity from Giant in the coming year. And finally, there was some very interesting activity on Geyser Hill, also near Old Faithful. In May, some older features that had gone dormant reactivated and some new features formed, splashing debris and hot water up onto the boardwalk. The Park Service had to close a short section of that boardwalk because of all of this hot water and debris. Now that lasted for late May into early June, but throughout June it sort of waned, and by July things were pretty dormant. And in early August, the Park Service lifted that closure and the boardwalk was open again. It's another amazing example of just how dynamic all of Yellowstone's geyser basins are. The one constant there is change. Number three, we have a new monitoring station at Yellowstone. In September of 2023, the University of Utah, USGS, EarthScope and the National Park Service collaborated to install the first equipment that was specifically intended to monitor hydrothermal activity in a comprehensive way in all of Yellowstone. The station includes a seismometer for looking at ground motion, a GPS station for seeing how the ground moves up and down and side to side over time, a weather station to look at changes in the environment, and an infrasound station. These are microphones that detect low frequency sound waves, like those that are generated by geyser eruptions. We're able to tell the direction that this sound comes from. So using the station, we can see which geysers are turning on and which are turning off over time. We've already seen spectacular results from this station for eruptions of steamboat geyser. So stay tuned. You're going to be hearing a lot more about this station in the future. Number four, volcanic eruptions at Yellowstone are really complex. Geologists from Montana State University have been studying the most recent caldera-forming eruption of Yellowstone, which occurred about 631,000 years ago. That emplaced a big deposit of ash called the Lava Creek Tuff. But it's not a single block of ash. There are many, many different units spread out over space in the Yellowstone area. How all of these units fit together is really difficult to figure out, and it's a testament to a much more complex sort of eruption than a simple one-and-done sort of explosion. USGS geologists have been looking at lava flows that formed after the caldera forming event. Many of these lava flows came out in a period of time between about 70,000 years ago and 160,000 years ago. But rather than these couple of dozen lava flows being spread out evenly over time, they occurred in five separate clusters. And in fact, they may have been occurring at the same time as part of these clusters. Imagine what that would have been like, coming to Yellowstone and seeing multiple eruptions of lava happening at the same time in different areas of the park. So the geologic research in Yellowstone right now, it's telling us amazing stories about how eruptions occur there. Well, that brings us to number five. The magma chamber beneath Yellowstone is coming into more focus. Now, previously, we had sort of a fuzzy view of the magmatic system. We knew there were two magma chambers stacked on top of one another. The first one was about three to 10 miles deep and made out of rhyolite. That's a very sticky, viscous magma. And the one below was about 15 to 30 miles deep. That was made out of basalt, which is a bit more runny, more fluid type of magma. But both were mostly solid. 
Thanks to a deployment of seismometers that was done in 2020, the resolution of this picture has really improved, like going from a 1 megapixel camera to a 13 megapixel camera. Now, instead of just seeing sort of a vague mush zone, we can see that the upper magma chamber has little lenses that are spread out horizontally. We call those sills, and they could be up to 28% melt interspersed within this mostly solid framework. Now, that's not enough to trigger an eruption of Yellowstone or be of concern anytime soon, but it's an incredible testament to the resolution, to our ability to see beneath the ground and to really understand what this magma system beneath this huge caldera complex looks like. Well, that does it for the December update and the 2023 summary from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Please hit like and subscribe down below, and if you have any questions at all, drop us a line. Our email address is yvowebteam, all one word, at usgs.gov. Happy 2024, stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy the new year, and we will see you next month. Bye-bye.